In this video, we will be talking about botulism and under that, we will be studying about its causative organism, the pathogenesis, the clinical manifestations, types of botulism and finally the laboratory diagnosis. Now, let's talk about the causative organism. The causative organism of botulism is Clostridium botulinum. This organism that is Clostridium botulinum is first of all gram positive which means that whenever you stain it with the gram stain it will appear purple in color. Secondly the shape is rod shaped so it is called bacillus. The third characteristic is it is an obligate anaerobe. Which means that it can only survive in anaerobic conditions. The presence of oxygen will hamper its growth. The next thing is it is spore forming. Which means that in unfavorable conditions for survival it forms spores and when the conditions are favorable the spores germinate to form the bacilli form again. And the last thing is it forms a toxin which is known as botulinum toxin and it is this toxin that causes botulism. So five things to remember about this organisms. First that it is gram positive. It is bacillus in shape. It is an obligate anaerobe which means that it can only survive in the absence of oxygen. The fourth thing is that it forms spores and the last thing is that it forms a toxin known as the botulinum toxin which causes botulism. Now let's talk about the pathogenesis of botulism. The pathogenesis is due to the production of powerful neurotoxin that is the botulinum toxin. This toxin is neurotoxin. which means that it can affect the nervous tissue and it is probably the most toxic substance. This is the most toxic substance for mankind. Now when the serotyping of this botulinum toxin is done, it can be typed into 8 serotypes. which are A, B, C1, C2, D, E, F and G. Now from all these the serotype A is most toxic all these produce a neurotoxin but only C2 produces an enterotoxin and enterotoxin causes adverse effects to the intestine. Now, both serotypes C and D which include C1 and C2, they all are bacteriophage coded. They are bacteriophage coded. The next thing is that whenever these toxins are synthesized, they are synthesized as a protoxin. And this protoxin is non-toxic which is acted upon by trypsin or any other proteolytic enzyme and gets converted into the active form which is toxic in nature. Now let's talk about the mechanism of action of the botulinum toxin. So when the toxin enters the body, which can be through inhalation or ingestion, it gets transported via blood to the peripheral cholinergic nerve terminals, 
there it binds to the ACH receptor that is the acetylcholine receptors. Now as these toxin molecules are binding to the ACH receptors the acetylcholine molecules that are released from the presynaptic membrane cannot bind to the receptors because the receptors are already engaged with the toxin molecules. This results into the blockade of acetylcholine release. which results into flaccid paralysis. Now, as this toxin produces flaccid paralysis, it is therapeutically used in cases where the patient is suffering from spasmodic conditions. These conditions can be Second, blepharospasm, and the third is myoclonus. Here, strabismus means squinting of eyes, blepharospasm means involuntary twitching of eye, and third, myoclonus means muscle jerks. Now, let's talk about the clinical manifestations of botulism. These manifestations are due to decreased acetylcholine in cranial nerve and parasympathetic nerve terminals. The first is diplopia, which means double vision. The second is dysphasia. which means partial loss of language. The third is dysarthria, which means partial loss of speech. Here it is to be seen that dysphasia means loss of language and dysarthria means loss of speech. The next is flaccid paralysis of voluntary muscles that too in descending symmetry which means that your hands will be first paralyzed and then your legs. This is called descending symmetry. Next thing is, deep tendon reflexes are decreased, that is decrease in deep tendon reflex. All this is due to the decreased acetylcholine. The next is constipation. The next is no sensory or cognitive deficits. And the last is, due to flaccid paralysis, the diaphragm can also be paralyzed, which can result in death. So these are all the clinical manifestations. The first is diplopia, which means double vision. Second is dysphasia which means partial loss of language. This arthria means partial loss of speech. The fourth is descending symmetric flaccid paralysis of voluntary muscles, which means that the muscles of the upper body are paralyzed first and then the legs. The next is loss of deep tendon reflex, then constipation. The next is 
there is no deficit in sensory or cognitive functions the sensory and cognitive functions are perfectly normal and the last is that it can result in death due to respiratory muscle paralysis now let's talk about the types of botulism there are total six types the first is food borne which results by the consumption of contaminated food with preformed toxin the second is wound botulism in wound botulism there is contamination of the wound by the spores it presents as food botulism except there are no gi features the third is infant botulism and it is the most common of all it results by the ingestion of contaminated food by infants and that food is contaminated by spores now the manifestations of infant botulism are that the infant cannot suck or swallow the voice of that infant is weakened floppy neck and extreme weakness and this is called floppy child syndrome the fourth is adult intestinal botulism it occurs in patients with suppressed normal flora so the spores of the clostridium botulinum germinate and produce toxin the next is eantrogenic botulism which results by the overdose of the toxin while it is used for therapeutic purpose and the last is inhalational botulism it results by the inhalation of the aerosols containing the spores and it can be used as a weapon of bioterrorism this is all about the types of botulism now we'll talk about the laboratory diagnosis the laboratory diagnosis includes two things the first is isolation of the bacteria and the second is toxin demonstration in isolation of the bacteria the first is gram staining which will reveal non capsulated bacilli with subterminal oval bulging spores second is motility these bacteria are motile as they have peritrichid flagella the third is culture they can be cultured in blood agar and in robertson's cooked meat broth now if these bacteria are proteolytic they will turn the meat into black color and if they are saccharolytic they will turn the meat into pink color and the last is serotyping which is done by type specific antisera now coming on to the next which is toxin demonstration it can be performed by mouse bioassay in which the specimen is injected into the mouse and because of the presence of the bacteria in the specimen paralysis is developed in the mouse and this paralysis can be inhibited if we have administered a specific antitoxin and the sensitivity of this mouse bioassay is inversely proportional to the time between the onset of the symptoms and the sample collection